The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got markets in positive territory to kick things off. You got the S&P right now, trading up 18 points at 41.40. NASDAQ 100 up by 36 points. Boy, NASDAQ, the leader yesterday, right? Up by 36 today. About a quarter percent in the positive, 13,519. The Dow up half a percent right now, 33,216. And you got the Russell up by a solid seven tenths percent right now. Bitcoin backing off a bit, off about $250 at 26,710. Crude up to 71.68. We've been getting a pop in the last few minutes. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. We'll talk some Forex at 40 past the hour, as we do every Wednesday. We'll talk some crude as well. So stay tuned for that interview coming up later in the program. Gold contract. Quite a slide from where we were about a week ago. Check it out, right? Week ago, gold at 2050. This morning, we hit 1985, man. We'll jump over to the dollar index in a moment. The 10-year, pretty flat action from where we were last night. The 10 years positive by four ticks. The 30 years positive by 14 ticks. I mentioned the dollar index. You jump over to the dollar index. That's going to cause some angst uh, for gold, as expected, right? You back up the dollar index. We're up almost two full points. Last Wednesday, as I said, gold was trading at, what, 2050? The dollar index was approaching 101. We were just above 103. We're at 102.83 right now in the dollar index. We got a lot in focus. We have some target earnings out this morning. Target up a bit, a little bit of volatility in both directions, but decent numbers. And they're going to be up by about a dollar. That follows Home Depot numbers yesterday. Pretty tough numbers from Home Depot. Talked about it yesterday, right? They talked about their fiscal year sales. Instead of being flat, which is what they thought they were going to be two to five uh, in February, they're now going to be down two to five percent. That's a stark change over the period of three months to say our total fiscal year sales may decline by up to 5% when just three months ago they said that they were going to be flat. And think about the fact, folks, that that is in an inflationary environment where most of the time you don't have to sell as many goods to reach the same level of sales. So they're going to have actual fiscal year sales down 5% in an environment where everything is costing 10 to 20% more than it cost just a few years ago. So that's been helping some of those numbers for some, some of those companies, at least on the top line basis, helping, right? Getting it to the bottom line for margins, a little bit of a different story. But nonetheless, we get Target this morning. They're up a bit. We got Walmart with their numbers tomorrow, catching a little bit of the tailwind of Target, up by a, a couple bucks this morning. And we shift to debt. So you have Speaker McCarthy saying he thinks the U.S. won't default as debt talks inch forward. A lot of headlines out there. I think at the end of the day, we do not have a debt default. And I guess that could be somewhat optimistic to see. Yeah, and that's just coming out this morning that he said um, on CNBC's Squawk Box, market liking that news, okay? They do not want to default. We got the market up to 4140. Talking about it yesterday, man, I keep your eye on this trend line. We're inching towards that trend line. I put it at about 4143, only a few points higher in the S&P from where we're at right now. That's on the futures. You jump over to the SPY, same exact line, man. And we got just within pennies of that price level. You're talking about just above 412 and where we've been. And boy, since last Wednesday, right? How many times we touched that line? Even yesterday, right on the open, got up to that line, traded lower. Maybe we'll touch that on the open again this morning. Nonetheless, you're up by 17 points and we jump over to Target shares. Ah, uh, oh, that was from last night. Excuse me. Okay, we'll pull up Target in a moment. We talked about Speaker McCarthy. Yeah, Elon last night was making news, man. Well, um, not really a story that he's making news. He's always out there, but I did find it interesting. He's talking about the morality. I'm not sure they cover it here. He's talking about the morality of working from home. This guy's, you know, he is brilliant, man. He's changing the world. Um, but boy, let me see if I can find the headline. I'll talk about it later because I'll pull up the headline. Because having the richest person in the world talk about employees having freedom to work from home if they can do their job being um, not morally in the right, I found that a little hard to swallow, to put it lightly, man. And we'll talk about that a little bit late in the program. 
Let's talk a little bit of fundamental news in housing starts out at 8.30 this morning. Those home builders, man. Housing starts rise in a sign home construction is stabilizing. Beginning construction rose 2.2% in April, the 1.4 million rate. Um, the West region is a big deal. Tanya, Florida is probably up there too, man. Single family home building increased 1.6% to the highest level this year. Yeah. Entirely due to a jump in the West, starts of apartment buildings and other multifamily projects also rose. Applications to build, a proxy for future construction, actually down 1.5%, still an annualized rate of 1.42 million units. And you have a, uh, and that's probably a seven-month high, permits for one-family dwellings, however, increased to a seven-month high, I assume. While elevated mortgage rates and affordability concerns remain headwinds for housing, a lack of inventories could support building activity over time and it is pretty remarkable as we get a pop on this market uh that you look at <clears throat> excuse me that's not what i want what is this equity i just pulled up dear i was going for dr horton drh i put in dhr what is what is what is dhr man danaher look at that equity that's that's quite a a ten day chart. Let's back this up. Boy, look at that thing, right, Danaher. You talk about a downtrend channel, man. We get a little sidetracked here. Manufacturers, markets, professional, medical, industrial, and commercial products and services, um, biotech, bioprocessing. Boy, I'd be careful if you're looking at that equity, man. That is a well defined channel line. We jump around, we stumble upon it. Uh, we we're looking at housing. We're going to go back to Dr. Horton in a moment, but this is Danaher, and if you're in this one, folks, ode to our man Bud Rolfs, the channel master. Pretty well defined there over the period of approaching. I mean, you could even say what going back to really August of 2021. Be careful of that one if you're in it. Okay, back to the housing. Dr. Horton is nope. What am I doing? Dr. Horton. DHI. There we go. We got there. Okay. DR Horton. Yeah, that's quite a chart, right? And we're pushing highs above where we were in 2021. And pay attention, man. Okay. Not a lot of people would have said when you started hiking in March of last year and DH Horton was at $78 that the Fed would still be hiking and you'd be at 111 with mortgage rates at 7% potentially. But no one's selling their house, man. Now, Lenar, pretty similar chart. Right from 117 down to 70 bucks, we were at a price point of about 82 when the Fed started hiking. We're basically back at all time. Is that all time? Might not be because there's some craziness that if you go back in some of these equities. So Lenar, yeah, well above. Look at both of them. Well above where you were in 2004. And it's a real deal, man. Okay, there's like an X factor in housing that nobody is going to be selling their house that has a mortgage under 4% until things get even remotely close to 4%. So how that plays into things, uh, it's going to hurt supply. And if you know economics, folks, okay, you have a very low supply. What's that going to do? That's going to push the point where the demand curve meets the supply curve at a higher price point. And it seems like it's persisting. And for the home builders out there, kind of a dream scenario, right? People in the People who have homes aren't going to sell to compete. Pretty remarkable. S&Ps climbing higher. We get the S&Ps at 41, 41. Stay tuned, folks. Coming back with our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures in the positive by about 18 points. That's about four tenths percent in the green right now. NASDAQ 100 positive by about two cents. And you got the Dow up about half a percent right now, up 163 points. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV with Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. The outstanding team they have. They had Randy Frederick on there yesterday watching him breaking down some action. Kevin Hinks, we got some debt headlines this morning. We got some target earnings out there this morning. We got some housing starts. Uh, where do you want to kick things off? Good morning, man. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, there's a lot going on this morning. A little pause in Fed speakers today as we've had a lot of them up until now. Uh, but target earnings, fair, you know, it's interesting. They they beat on earnings per share, even you know on expectations. The actual earnings were down six point two percent year over year. Revenues were actually up 0.6. but you know they were very cautious about going forward. I think the stock was down when the earnings came out, Tommy. I was you know watching very closely when the earnings came out, and then they talked about the margins now back up over five. I think it was 5.2 or 5.3 percent their margins are. That's a long way from 3.6, which is where they were when they were experiencing those discretionary inventory problems. So I think they're making really good progress. But how about Tommy? How about Brian Cornell, their CEO, talking about $500 million in theft and organized retail crime? That is amazing when you think of those numbers that's affecting their earnings per share overall theft. But pretty interesting look. Like I said, beat on earnings, beat on revenue, very conservative guidance. But I think some people are liking the fact that the stock is, or the, the, you know, the company is getting the margins back up to a reasonable level, Tommy. I think that, that will eventually start to show up in earnings per share. Yeah, I get the chart up here on the Thinkorswim platform, man, and 
boy, they had quite a drop off when those numbers were coming to and the margins, what you were talking yep. about there. And yeah, 500 million, man, uh, quite a number when it becomes material. And uh, boy, that's it better be material when you're talking about half a billion dollars, right? Pretty interesting action. Uh, did you see housing starts this morning, Kevin? Just thinking a little big picture. I was pulling up Lennar earlier in the program and uh, DR Horton, absolutely resilient charts. They're pushing highs. We got housing starts at pretty lofty levels. Uh, thinking a little big picture here, you know, we're not talking Delta, we're not talking Theta, but it is kind of interesting big picture, Kevin, how we got mortgage rates where they are, right? People don't want to sell their house. They don't need to. What do you think about some of these home builders, man, when the housing starts pretty resilient and you can't deny some of those charts, man, Lennar, DR Horton, uh, what do you think about that? Because, man, it, it seems like nobody's going to sell their house. Why would you unless interest rates come anywhere near back to 4% or something like that, which is what they'd be giving up if they sell their house? I think any conversation on housing has to start with the fact that the financial crisis in 2008 and nine, we are about 5 million homes below where we need to be. And so, therefore, yeah, housing is going to struggle when interest rates are spiking higher and moving aggressively. But, Tommy, I think the very minute you saw interest rates start to plateau and calm down, I think there's a queue that forms in housing, and they're all rushing back in, and housing is still very strong. Mortgage apps were down this week because the 30-year fix went up from 648 to 657. But last week, you know, refis were up 10%. Purchases were up almost four point, uh, up almost 5%. So a little bit of softness there with rates going higher, Tommy. But housing is still strong. I mean, there's still a uh, need for housing, and I think we're still short on overall houses, Tommy. So, yeah, I think these builders have backlogs. I think they have built-in business, and I think they're doing extremely well with very low valuations, by the way. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man, checking out those charts on the Thinkorswim platform. Just so strong, um, those builders, and really remarkable. I was saying, if you said, you know, back it up to last March, Kevin, right? You say the Fed's going to start hiking. They're not going to stop until the middle of next year. Where are the home builders going to be when mortgage rates are pushing 7%? You said they're going to be higher, man, but that's the world we're in, man. Uh, with that in mind... As you mentioned, a little light on the Fed speak. We still got the debt crisis looming out there with McCarthy making some comments this morning. We got uh, at least one company comes to mind with earnings tomorrow. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today, Kevin? As you would think, Tommy, uh, like Foley is going to do a presentation on Walmart. We're going to we trade go. Walmart. Actually, again, we traded it last week as well when uh, some of the retail earnings started to come out. We're also going to look at Cisco that has earnings coming up, and then Take-Two Interactive, uh, a video game company. So three good names today with the, with the focus being on Walmart's earnings today, Tommy. And if you can, Kevin, because I, I was watching the program yesterday, and you guys did a great job. You were talking about Target. And for those that didn't check it out, um, could you speak a little bit about what you guys were talking about on Target? Because it was just a great conversation, I thought. And Landon Swan was on there. He was talking about, you know, no matter what's happening, and it kind of points to maybe if you can tie Walmart into it, no matter what these companies are doing, man, Target, I love going to Target, man. I go to Target with Tommy. We got a Starbucks at the beginning of our journey. I put him in the cart. I'm drinking my Starbucks. He's walking around playing with toys. I mean, quite quite a, a social um, endeavor, right? That Target's somehow made a social endeavor of, of me walking around their store. But the point was that you guys were making, no matter what they're doing right, man, there is a headwind on this economy right now. Uh, is that something you're going to look for, Walmart as well, Kevin? I thought it was a great point as I was thinking about it because they're so big. No matter what you're doing, if you're doing things right right now, if the economy's facing some tough heat, these companies might be paying for that you know, weakened economy. Yeah, one of the points we made yesterday was Target does so many things well in terms of how they figured out you know, digital and delivery. And next day, when, when they bought shipped in 2017, ahead of, you know, the, the, the pandemic, they were ready. How they use their 2,000 stores in terms of ful ful fulfillment. You know, they don't use other buildings, so they're more efficient that way. They have great partnerships that you just mentioned, uh, Starbucks. They also have Ulta. They also have Disney. They also have Apple that, that they're partners with. So they've got a great brand and product ready to go but tommy remember those discretionary inventories that they bet heavy on and lost has hurt the price of the stock now the, you know we want to see that you know inventories were down 16 percent ending inventories when uh, they, they reported earnings that's a good sign for getting through that that should raise their margins but walmart it's almost 
hard, Tommy, to compare Walmart to Target because Walmart is so big and has so much, um, you know, so much volume that that they can put out there in such big numbers and there's such a discount uh, retail that you can buy everything in. So largest grocer in the world. So, yeah, it's going to be a similar conversation, but also very different, Tommy. And it'd be interesting to see what they come out with in terms of how many of those high earners they're luring into their stores, right? They were talking about that last go around. Trading down, yes. Ooh, it makes sense, man. I mean, everything costs so much, and Target is not cheap. That's the one thing I'll say. It's an enjoyable experience, which is what I'm speaking to, which is probably why I found the conversation so interesting with you guys saying they do do a lot of things right, man. It is an enjoyable experience. Um, they got Disney, you mentioned, man. We go through that toy section, right? So I, 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 I yep. felt that in a big way. Uh, but guess what? I'm going to Walmart too, man, because when I want to save some money, I go to Walmart. When I want to have kind of a decent experience in a great store, I go to Target. Pretty interesting, but it lined up with what you guys were saying. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning as always, man. We'll be watching Fast Market at 12 today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Have a great day, Tommy. You too. Folks, check it out. They're talking Walmart. They're talking Cisco. They're talking Take Two. They're going to be doing three Hypothetical trades at 12 today on Fast Market. Don't miss the program, folks. I've learned so much myself from Kevin over the years. Check it out today, and we'll be right back from the market open, folks. Stay tuned. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. S&P's open up about 20 points right now, trading at 41.42. And I thought it was a great conversation, folks. I watch the program all the time, Fast Market. I encourage you to check it out. Think or swim. TD Ameritrade, they are sponsors. I know they are, folks. I know I'm biased. It comes with it, but I watch it all the time myself uh, to learn from what they're talking about on that program. They do an outstanding job. And, yeah, I found it very interesting. I'm going to pull up a picture of Tommy in the cart because it is interesting, folks, when you see how the social aspect, okay, of things combines into that they've literally sucked me into their store for a social happening. Meanwhile, I'm walking around potentially spending money on my son. Now, you should see the real battle, okay, is trying to get out of there without a cart full of toys. That's the real kicker. Uh, but I've gotten pretty good at it. And what that consists of is basically filling up the cart. Give me one second here. And then emptying out that cart as we get to the, the cash register in the end. Now, if you're looking to go short in this market, man, we just hit this price level. Uh, we bumped up against that boundary line yet again, coming into the market at about four in the morning, coming into the close last night. We're solid two spy points, 20 S&P points above that level, and we're bumping up against that trend line. And that trend line has been holding uh, for a week to the upside. So we'll see where we go from there. Nonetheless, we're trading at 41.42. I wouldn't expect any miracles from the debt talks today, man. I don't know how that comes out. In terms of I don't know what either side is willing to give the other side to walk away a winner after they've both become pretty entrenched, right? That says it all. So we'll see where we go from there. Uh, we check out Target with their numbers. Target shares basically flat at 156.60 right now. Walmart ahead of their numbers tomorrow, 150.58. Let me see if I can find that Tommy picture. I emailed it to myself uh, during the break. I'm going to pull it up because it's it's interesting, folks. Yeah, check it out. All right, here we go. I got it. So you got to love this. Let's pull it up. Here he is. Here's the man. Okay. So, you got a lot going on here, right? Here's my man, Tommy O'Brien IV. Uh, he's in his Target cart. Target, I, we're, we're going to send this clip to Target, man. They're going to have to send me some free gift cards so we can go in there all the time. Uh, he's in the cart. There's my Starbucks, okay? Got my Starbucks, got him in the cart. He's got his Thomas the Train in there as well. He's fired up. He's ready to go because he knows the red store is where he likes to go around for toys, okay? He knows they got dinosaurs there. And you see the look on his smile and face. Look at those eyes, man. Come on. Could I be a little biased? Uh, but you got to realize how that goes, right? So it's turned into a fun time for us to be around the store. The Disney section he knows well. He loves Mickey. He loves all those characters. Uh, they got a bunch of good, cool dinosaur toys as well. And, yeah, so we fill them all up the whole time. We walk around. We'll grab him some clothes. I'll grab a few things for myself. But guess what? When I'm not with Tommy... And when I got to fill up the household items, when I'm talking about paper towels, toilet paper, right, uh, groceries, milk, the whole deal, fruit even. Walmart has great fruit occasionally. Target's got some great produce as well. But I go to Walmart when I want to save. And even better, I go to Sam's, which I belong to as well when you want to save. I don't do that stuff at Target because they got some high prices, man. But they've created an environment uh, and you see him. And his kick is he likes to pretend like he's drinking my coffee. He says, mmm, delicious. Uh, yeah. So consumers are changing their price habits, man. Uh, and look at Walmart dropping off from the open. 152 to 149.69. Is Target dropping as well? No, not quite the case. Interesting. So whatever they're seeing in those target numbers, man, Walmart was higher and they're giving it up just like that for Walmart. Let's see how some of the FANG stocks are trading right now. Apple shares down a bit. It's been shopping around. We jump over to Microsoft shares, up about two tenths percent. We jump over to Apple shares. Down about three, we just did a, uh, Google shares right now, down about one-tenth. The whole AI deal is quite a trip, man. You solve this one, you're going to solve a lot. Because I was watching an interesting YouTube conversation last night talking about, you know, what happens to reporters? What happens to writers, right? Boy, I would be very worried if I was a content writer in any degree. Um, you look at the Writers Guild in Hollywood, right? Boy, that one could stretch on because you're going to see AI. I mean, one of the... One of the biggest complaints about AI, okay, is that the accuracy of what they're predicting or um, feeding back would probably be better. The, the accuracy of what they're doing. And one of the things that have been so worrisome is when you have the AI chatbots just creating complete fabrications of something 
to align with whatever they're telling you. Well, that's like perfect for story writing, man. Okay, you're gonna have writers prompting AI to deliver scripts, and what it's gonna become is, if you're a writer, you better learn the way to prompt AI to give you the output you want, and then you better learn editing skills, because that's the deal, okay? You're gonna become a prompter for AI, and you're gonna become an editor. You're gonna have to spit out your thousand word compilation, and then you're gonna have to add eight or 10 sentences where they're needed, you're gonna have to take a couple away, and how did you prompt that? In what way did you prompt that to deliver the article that you were looking for? But writers in Hollywood, imagine you're in tough shape, man, because writing in general, content in general, uh, not going to be as labor intensive as it once was and AI changing the world to a certain degree for sure. All right, let's jump around and see what else I have pulled up. Let's talk a little bit of J.P. Morgan, and let's talk a little bit of cuts. J.P. Morgan Asset says, Markets are right to bet on a U.S. rate cut. The Fed may lower rates by third quarter as U.S. US growth slows. Recession is needed to bring inflation back down. I would argue that's the case, man. Inflation's raging. Unemployment's at 3.4%, uh, and we probably need some pain to make sure the companies cannot be raising prices the way they've been able to. Uh, and this is talking about head of global rates in London. So U.S. recession is virtually certainty as the Fed may lower rates by the third quarter as growth loses momentum. That's according to J.P. Morgan Asset Management and this gentleman, Seamus McGarain, head of global rates in London. Inflation is too high. It will take a recession to bring us back down. Uh, U.S. banking, that would be the case, have made a recession more likely. We've seen a lot of Wall Street. I bring this up because we've seen a lot of Wall Street shy away from saying that the Fed is going to be cutting. Right. You've seen a lot of them say, geez, that's a tough scenario. You know, they're probably going to pause, uh, but things aren't that dire yet. We'll see if they go. And as they bring up, you got Goldman and Barclays, which caution that the Fed will be less aggressive in cutting rates this year than markets are predicting. That's been the common theme. So interesting to see J.P. Morgan pushing back a little bit, saying, hey, things might be worrisome here uh, and we might actually get cuts in the third quarter. Boy, what's happening if we're getting cuts, man? I have to remind you folks that core CPI was just at 5.5%, okay? Uh, and what I what I cannot argue with though is that fixed income right now is a good spot to be in, folks, okay? They're talking about cuts and he's talking about fixed income. He's not talking about, hey, we're gonna see cuts and this market's gonna accelerate. Treasuries are still the best market. Other markets have started to become more attractive. The real point to get involved will be when you see clear evidence of inflation turning in those markets which may not come until a bit later in the summer a bit later in the summer man we need a lot more um would be my opinion in terms of what we have happening there but risk-free rate of return man hasn't been around in a while and it's around right now and when you start doing the numbers folks okay i mean even look at where we were the last six months right look at where we were in september you're right where you were well that's six months of free interest that you just gave up and what's that two two to three percent return on your money that you just gave up by sitting in stocks let alone we're pushing five percent now stay tuned folks we're coming back with our man teddy kegstat we'll talk some dollar we'll talk some forex we'll talk some commodities don't go away that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. 
Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Well, apologies, folks. Uh, welcome back. We got the S&Ps right now. What are we, positive by about 15 points? I get the SPY up there. S&P is positive by 15. We do trade a little bit lower on that uh, trend line that we've been talking about. We'll see if the day, uh, what the day holds. The day is young, as our band, man Basil Chapman says. But right now, we're going to jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report. He puts out a new issue every Monday. And I always say, I know a lot of you don't trade Forex. There is an abundance of great information in there that you can use, whether you're talking about talking about the Forex pairs, talking about uh, bonds, talking about crude oil, right? Talking about currencies in there. Please check it out. You can go over, sign up. It's $97. You gain access to the archive webinar that Teddy just did. It comes with a money back guarantee. You can't go wrong, folks. And Teddy just did that uh, live archive less than a month ago, folks, talking about the second quarter. So you get that as well. And uh, as usual, we got some action, Teddy. We got the dollar index trading higher yet again. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we do have some very good action today. What do you want to talk about to start off? Where do you want to kick it off, man? We got action everywhere. <clears throat> we got yields. We got the dollar pushing 103. Why not the dollar? Can we check out the dollar? Because we got a little bit of movement, especially in sure. the last week or so. Sure. Uh, well, you, <clears throat> the dollar definitely is um, showing some nice strength, uh, especially because you got the euro that's falling. You got the Swiss and the yen that both have broken out uh, to the upside, which is a very nice uh, indication of dollar strength right now. So the only one that's really kind of lagging is the British pound U.S. dollar uh, trade. But outside of that, right now, the euro or excuse me, the U.S. dollar is very strong versus most major pairs. Yeah, and I know we got a lot of gold bulls, of course, uh, that follow, that are watching, that are in the Tiger's Den. Gold's been pulling back as we've had. I mean, even from last Wednesday, we were at almost 101 on the dollar index. We're at 103 right now. We've seen gold go from like 2050 down to low of 1985, I think it was this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. For those in that market, Teddy, with the dollar at 103, I know you put this stuff out in the letter every week, mm -hmm. but where do you see some of these levels? Maybe if you are, you know, bullish in the dollar, you're looking for a pop, or maybe you're looking back on, on that lower consolidation. Where do you see kind of the risk-reward ratios with the dollar at 103 when really we're, that mm -hmm. 101 area was kind of a nice low that we had, and now we're almost not no man's land, but we got a high back there from March at almost 106, and we're sitting kind of in the middle at 103. Sure, sure. Well, right now, I definitely am a short-term bull with the dollar. First of all, you have the uh, the yield curve, which now you have uh, the bonds that broke out to the downside this week. That's setting a <clears throat> new trend. There's definitely, I would say, you're going to see a, a nice little surge in, uh, in rates over the next few weeks, meaning bonds and 10-year uh, prices going lower. And if that scenario is right, then you're going to see that definitely the, um, the dollar short up. And I think one of the major currencies you have to watch is um, – 
the euro to the downside. Um, is it going to be an aggressive sell off? Probably not, but I think the trend is definitely going to be lower for the euro for the next uh, probably week and a half to two weeks. Um, what will be very interesting to watch is the U.S. dollar Swiss trade because overall that market is a bull against the dollar. However, the Swiss is really grinded against the dollar for months, and I think that we we set a nice little bottom. And I, I wouldn't I'd be very careful with being along the U.S. dollar Swiss. I think you still have a little nice potential to the upside, probably another one to two basis points. So, um, and especially with the U.S. dollar yen, there's another one to the upside. I think there's a lot of potential. I think we could see um, very, very big multi-month highs in the U.S. dollar yen. And I think if you want to have a really good risk reward trade, buying dips in the U.S. dollar yen tr uh, trade for probably the next one to two months would be a very good uh, play. Nice. And of course, that's going to impact the gold contract. But yeah, that's a volatile <laughs> chart, man. I just pull it back um the last, what, 12 months? Yeah, you talk about some volatility in the dollar yen pretty much everywhere in this market. And what do you think about crude, Teddy? Because we're chopping around that mm -hmm. crude market. We're sitting just above 70 bucks, quite the pullback that we had uh, in April. You gave back all sure. the OPEC plus, plus, plus some. We actually hit 43 bucks, I got on my chart. Uh, right. What do you think of crude sitting at just above $71? Sure. Um, with crude, I think you have to kind of watch. Uh, let's see, I'll give you some levels here. Uh, yes. I would say with crude, you need to probably look out for the, uh, let's see, probably the, this, the, the last high swing high around that 73.64 area is key. If we take that out, then I think you're going to have to, uh, you'll probably get a surge in crude. But as long as we stay below that, I think it's going to be a choppy trade from $70 probably $2 down to about $68, $67. Um, I don't see it trending to the downside. I see more of a choppy action going on <clears throat> when it comes to crude. I don't see that we could probably have any major extended sell-off. Um, there's no reason to. We're coming into the summer where demand is going to be increasing, you know, so I would, I, I just can't, can't be a bear on that one, you know. I think that and especially if rates do start to go higher again that's it probably going to help give a lift to the bulls for the, um, the crude oil market as well so that's a perfect segue and you talked about yields a little bit mm -hmm. you talked about it on the 30 year i had it up here on the chart where you were talking about it um but just a little big picture i know for those who have been mm -hmm. listening i mean you're looking for potentially some some hikes out there as we right. go forward uh, what mm -hmm. did you think of some of, you know, since the last week, it seems like we get so much data. You had retail sales. We got some numbers out there um, from Home Depot. We got, mm -hmm. you know, the retail sales are pretty strong, man, in, in all things considered. What do you think about the conversation about the Fed? Because we're already shifting. I feel like we're about mm -hmm. a month out now from the June meeting, and you're hearing some Fed speak out there. Of course, we had a lot of it the last couple of days. What do you think? Um, how does that factor into what you're talking about with bonds you still looking for potential hikes at the next meeting absolutely you, where do you see I'm, I'm looking for more hikes absolutely i can't nice. i don't see anything relatively with the numbers that me would indicate any reason for them to stop hiking i just really don't you know so i think that the numbers even though they're not as coming out as bad as they have over the past year and a half um that doesn't mean they're not still horrible <laughs> so, yeah. you know, yeah. relatively there. Um, so and I would watch the S&Ps, you know, the S&Ps have been drifting. They're failing to make new highs, you know, and uh, this will be a good tr a crude trade for you. If the S&Ps, especially the transports, if you watch the transports, if those take a dive over the next uh, two to three months, then you might see crude lay off a little bit, uh, you know. So but if transports stay firm. You know, that's something I would say is going to also hold up the crude market. But overall, I would watch those S&Ps, uh, especially as rates start to climb. If they do, if I'm right on that one and bonds sure. and 10-year start to really um, start to hit the new lows, uh, then I would say you're going to probably see the S&P as a whole under pressure. I mean, there's only eight stocks that are holding it up to begin with right now. You know? <laughs> so, so, it is. Right. Whenever sure. I'm looking at the S&P, man, I'm watching Apple and Microsoft. And I mean, those articles, it just made me pull up those eight stocks because I said, that's what's doing everything, man. Um, it is pretty interesting. And yeah, I mean, S&Ps, you can't deny, you don't have to be a master uh, technical trader to say, man, we're bumping up against an area, whether it's 4,200, mm -hmm. 4,150, whatever it is, um, been resistance recently. And yeah, I always keep saying to myself, Teddy, I say it to my listeners too, but Core CPI is at 5.5%, man. We got mm -hmm. some ways to go. I'm not sure if you heard some of the Fed speak going on from Rafael Bostic saying, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like anything could happen. Of course we could come down, 
But boy, mm -hmm. when you talk about the risks in this market, I think it would really lean to the fact that there's more of a risk that we hike. Right. And guess what? The best part about it is we get to find out uh, in a month at the June sure. meeting. And I imagine no matter right. what happens in June, man, even if they do pause, uh, mm -hmm. they have a long way to go, like you're saying. So right. we're, we're going to get to see this sure. thing play out over some period of time. Well, Teddy, uh -huh. I appreciate the time on a busy morning as always, man. It's Absolutely. always interesting to say where we'll be next week by then. Mm -hmm. uh, but I appreciate the insight. Folks, check it out on the front page of TFNN, the Tiger Forks Report. And uh, Teddy, we'll talk to you next week, man. Have a great week, okay? Thank you, Tommy. You have a great week, too. Thanks for coming on. Folks, check it out. Teddy's putting, he puts an outstanding report out every Monday. I read it every Monday. He sends it out to his subscribers. Uh, and you heard him right there. He tells you where the, um, what his opinion is. And we get to find out, right? Whether they're right or wrong, but he gives it to you, folks. Check it out on the front page, and we'll be right back for the end of the program. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we got markets trading lower right now. And listen, I know I'm wrong all the time. Everyone's wrong all the time, man. But sometimes, okay, you're right. And sometimes it just seems too easy, folks, okay? But you take a look at that technical indicator in terms of the line that we're bumping up against, man. You don't have to give yourself much room when you're trading stuff like this, okay? You give yourself maybe three points, maybe five points, keep things tight with the type of volatility we've been going. I've been talking about in this program, 
you can trade this market both directions, depending on what kind of strategy, what kind of risk reward you're talking about, and the moves you're getting. We just got 15 S&P points right from where we were coming into the open. We opened right at that trend line. Same exact thing we did yesterday, man. Okay, yesterday's action, we spike at 940 right up to that channel line. We sell off. Um, and again, doesn't mean it's going to happen. Doesn't mean we're not going to recoil to that level. But I put that level on your chart right now because we're talking about going back a good six trading days. Yeah, today's the sixth day. We're bumping up against that level right now. And this market's going to have some headwinds, man, because you're seeing things play out, talking about margins, talking about cuts, talking about hikes. But it's all about earnings, folks, and margins are playing into things. And when companies can't raise, the thing you have, the thing I try to think about right going forward is, okay, so we're going to tame inflation. I, I am confident that we are going to get inflation under control because we have to. And the chairman knows that, I think. So we get inflation under control. What does that mean? That means companies cannot raise prices anymore. Well, where is there a lag? There's a lag in wages, right? Wages have to catch up a little bit with the inflation we've been seeing. So what's going to happen? You're going to have companies unable to raise prices the way they've been used to. And you're going to have some lag in costs still going on, right? So what's going to happen? Margins are going to be in trouble. That's what people talk about. So even if we get there... Be careful in this market as we're sitting near 4,200. We have a little bit of a sell-off on the open. All the market's still in the positive, though. And, yeah, Mr. Elon Musk, I didn't get to talk about this one that much. But, you know, him talking about it's morally wrong. This is the headline, folks. Working from home is morally wrong. You want to have a conversation what's morally wrong, man? It's the richest man in the world paying no taxes on all the money he has, okay? And he's going to say he paid taxes. He only paid those taxes when he sold all his shares to buy Twitter. He didn't have to. The richest people out there paying no taxes, okay? That is morally wrong. You talk about people that can do their job from home on a laptop, not really the same deal. We'll end on that one. Stay tuned, folks. We got.